Hello again everyone, I'm Lee Berger from Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome back to updates from the 105 Expedition. It's a, it's a windy day here if you're wondering what all that noise is in the background. But we've had quite an exciting 48 hours. If you remember, we were about to begin preparing the first hominid specimen from the 105 site, which is near the Rising Star cave site. That process began and at the same time, I had selected a block, a fairly random block, from right next to, well, not right next to, about 20 meters away from where uh, we had discovered this block. I saw fossils that I thought might be similar and rock that might be similar to the type of breccia that surrounds the hominid fossil. And it was an experiment to see could we locate some of the fossils that might eventually be associated with the 105 hominid mandible, the first one that we discovered. Um, I can tell you that it's been an extraordinary thing because literally the first block that we were looking, other than the hominid mandible, actually contains hominids as well, and it's not the same individual. Now for those of you who don't follow paleoanthropology very much, the likelihood of that is almost zero. Many of us go through our entire careers and never see a actual hominid fossil in the wild it, it discovered like this. The fact that the very second block appears to be, and I'm not going to understate this, full of hominid material means that we are probably into an extraordinarily rich hominid fossil site here. It's another big toothed individual. It, the wear on the tooth surface is quite a lot more than the juvenile that we discovered first, so it's certainly another individual. We don't know what it is. We kind of know what it's not right now. We know it's not a sediba. The teeth are too big. They, they aren't shaped in the right way. We know that the teeth aren't homo naledi, but other than that, we have no idea what species we're dealing with except a large toothed hominid. Very exciting, though, and I think uh, just as we promised, uh, we're going to suddenly be finding quite a lot of exciting material from this extraordinary site. I'm going to actually go live to the site, go live to Justin and Zandile, and we'll take a look at the fossils that are coming out so you can actually see what it looks like as we discover these fantastic fossils from the 105 expedition. Let's just go online now and see if we can get and grab them. I, I can hear you perfectly, so we can we can go right on it. And it, using the it uses this large camera here. Yeah, and we'll want to bring the bright light off of the block. So, Justin, can you just take us through what we're looking at here? That's a beautiful big tooth. Yes. So. Right, so it looks to me like that tooth is very heavily worn, isn't it? It's flat on top. Yeah, because of the, the cap is down. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. And those other bones look very promising as well, don't they? Yeah, and the next one also. Yep. I see that some sort of a long bone, maybe a maybe a humeral shaft, and and these ones yeah. along the side. So I think the idea uh, of of preparing, yeah, those are beautiful. They look very hominid to me. The the cortical bone is very thick there, um, on those. Yeah, I think that has a very good chance of being an ulna as well. Um, so what the plan I think is 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 let's. Let's prepare the block out, leaving all the bones in place. What that'll do is allow us to do photogrammetry on it and take the orientation and possibly fit this block back in C2 once we've done that. But I think it's, uh, you know, my instincts are telling me that that is going to be uh, just full of hominid material. It's fantastic to have seen a hominid on the, on the first one. And even those tiny, tiny fragments there, let's make sure we preserve them and pillar them out. Because yeah. it, it looks to me like they may all be associated with each other. And that is just fantastic. It's great to look at. Well, that's a little bit of an impression here. 
Oh, uh, yeah, I see that. You know, we might be able to match that with one of the blocks that's sitting there where the collapse occurred and actually and actually link it to this block. That would be fantastic. So let's make sure we get uh, good 3D images of, of that as well when we do the photogrammetry. Um, we'll use the same method we're using in the Lissetti chamber and actually get three-dimensional pictures of it so that we can we can reproduce that as well but leave that one alone and we'll try and we'll try and link that up with a, a, another block i'll take a look at it i'll take a look and see if i can find it when i'm out there next week is, is there a way to bring zandili into this conversation can you see if you could bring her in uh, the graphic style of uh, material is a very tiny, very tiny, uh, I don't know what species it is, Justin. I, it, I can tell you it's not Homo naledi, and it's way too big, and the shape isn't right, and the enamel's too thick to be sediba. Um, you know, we have big toothed individuals like this uh, at, at Sturkfontein. Uh, some people uh, that, 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 uh, are, are usually attributed to Africanus. We also have um, uh, Big Tooth Robustus. You know, I, it's a little hard to tell. I'm going to hold my comments for now until I can really see the surface of the cusp to see if it's it's sort of bulbous and crinula crinulated in the way that Robustus is. Um, right now, it's more like those, but, you know, we, we don't have enough out yet, I think, to say. I think we can begin to say what it's not. You know, it's not Homo sapiens, it's not Homo erectus, it's not Sediba, it's not Naledi. But I haven't seen enough to know what it is yet. Hi, Zandila. How are you doing? No, I'm back behind you. I'm, I'm on this camera behind you. <laughs> this camera, yeah. The black one. <laughs> So back up a little bit. It's a it's a little bit unclear, Zandila. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, I can see that. Ah, good. Okay. Right. So you're just working your way around the back of the rock, trying to trying to get that rock to to pull away from the tooth. Okay. All right. Well, that looks great. Keep at it. Take your time. Um, and okay, super. Send me some close-up pictures. But I get it. And yeah, take your time. It's looking great. All right, then delay. Bye bye. Well, so there you go. The uh, you can see what's happening live with us. Um, we are. It's incredible to actually see hominids like that in in a, in a second block so quickly. Uh, that just really doesn't happen. I mean, the only other place where anything like that has ever happened. Well, only other two places are Malapa with Australopithecus sediba and Homo naledi. Um, and even with Sediba, it wasn't wasn't so quick where every other block uh, had hominids in it. And those other bones, they look really promising. So I'm going to go out on a limb here and say we're in for a great time. This is going to be another spectacular hominid site. So keep tuning in as we as we go along. You'll watch it happen live. We'll probably be increasing the number of, of blocks. Uh, that we prepare from there. I think the big news is that we now have a high probability of knowing where that hominid came from, and we know there's more than one individual in there, and we know the preservation is spectacular. Keep joining us on these updates. Follow the Fossil Vault YouTube channel, or follow my Facebook page, Prof. Lee Arberger, or my Twitter, at Lee Arberger. Uh, and thanks for joining us.